I've always wanted to build robots. Since I was a kid, I've wondered what it would take to bring the technology and machines from science fiction to life. With the rise of artificial intelligence and ChatGPT, building robots that once felt impossible is now finally within reach. And so, for the past six months, we've been building just that. It's the morning, we've got another great day of building robots. Come on, I'll show you around. We started in our small shoebox apartment with a single 3D printer. We were so impressed that we purchased three 3D printers and eventually went to six. I typically like to get a little bit of coding done in the morning before everyone shows up. All right, Miles is here. Good morning. Today, we're building a full robot. We 3D printed all the parts we needed overnight, and now we're ready to go. All right, Colin, what are you working on here? Uh, I'm building the last of the two robot arms. Very nice. Look at these sleek arms over here. Look at that bad boy. We've got Chris over here building the kiosk software for the robot. This is the software that shows up on the robot's touchscreen. So you can fire the robot up and then control it just like that. And right now I was helping to build arms, but now I'm going to help Miles over there with some of the electric. Look at this, we have the first layer done. Now we just have to put the LEDs and a little bit more electronics in. All right, and once a week, I'll usually buy pizza for the whole team to keep morale high. Sometimes building all these robots gets a uh, pretty draining occasionally. Pretty nice area here, even if it's not nice out today. All right, two giant pizzas. We got pepperoni and buffalo chicken. Don't want to get hit by a car. <laughs> Way too much water in this apartment. We are very hydrated here. <laughs> the robot base is looking pretty good. We're working on reprinting the linear actuator holders. Look at this, we have the first two layers of the robot done. So we have some more walls printing, and then we'll finish this bad boy up. While everyone's finishing the base of the robot, I'm gonna be building the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is a tiny computer that fits inside the robot. We're going to be running a Linux server on the Pi, so we can send commands that the robot can perform. We need a Raspberry Pi, a USB hat, and a Pi power board. And we have our Raspberry Pi set up. So I'm going downstairs to get the ton of Amazon packages we have. So I think they delivered our 100 batteries. Not our batteries, but a lot of wires and parts. Dropped them. This is a little bit ridiculous. I'm gonna drop everything. Almost there. All right, we're back. Uh. Oh my goodness. It's like 20 packages of things, my goodness. That's it, in the meantime. Alright, I've done that and it goes to 100%. And then try online again, it should tell you it's the upgraded version. It doesn't though. Oh boy, hold on. Uh, we might have got a problem here, let's see. This motor's really old. Let's see. Ah uh, yes, hitting it a 17th time to do it. False alarm, we almost had to throw out several motors, but... It's all good. But here, we ran into another problem. Some of our prints came out poorly, specifically the upper third level walls. So we have to reprint them and put it together tonight. It's about eight o'clock at night. We're not done with the robot just yet. We had to wait for a lot of parts to be printed, but I do want to show you the full robot completed. So we'll show you a little bit of the next day as well when we finish the box. This is how much we have done with the robot so far. We could have gotten a lot further, but some of the key pieces that we needed further down the line needed to be reprinted here. Luckily, we have our linear actuator holder parts here, and tomorrow we're looking good to finish the robot. 
Colin's back, but unfortunately we had only one of our parts succeed in the printer. It is actually 1 a.m. Colin put together the third row and a couple pieces of the dome. We'll be able to finish the whole thing tomorrow. And we're back. We have the robot here, Miles and Colin here. Chris just stepped out for a second. But we have three layers of the robot done, and we're putting together the angle braces and the dome. So it's going to be done very soon. Here I'm writing the desktop and the software that goes on the robot. Most of the flashy build clips and excitement will be around the hardware. But the reality is there is an enormous amount of effort that goes into the software and the AI that goes into the robot. What are you working on over there, Miles? I am building a pedal hop set. With this motor, it's gonna go, uh, I'm gonna start attaching everything in their rightful places. How about you, Colin? They're starting in the speaker. Here. That is the new part of our robot. We finally got to add those. And we have the dome being placed on. We have to do a little sanding there, but it's looking good. And then we have the telops. Very nice. For our final piece, we're going to put the Raspberry Pi in and connect all the cameras. After running into every possible problem in the book, it's finally coming together. Uh, the problem was that the screen just would not turn on. Didn't know why. We replaced a whole bunch of stuff. We even replaced the whole screen. Wouldn't work. Turns out we had a bad HDMI cable. And we had a second problem with this Raspberry Pi board. This board right here actually has an automatic switch that you need to hit. Long term, we're going to enforce the philosophy that customers should get their robot, turn it on, and everything just works. We've made it so when we put every camera in, as well as all the motor controllers, we're going to click one button on a script and everything is going to update the Raspberry Pi and all the internal logic and all the internal code so it's consistent for every robot. It's going to be extremely challenging to achieve, but I know we can do it giving enough time and engineering effort. The goal here is to take that robot and test an AI model we trained on a different robot to quality assurance, to make sure it's good before we deliver. And of course, this first one's gonna be delivered to our employees, so if something goes wrong, well, we can fix it. And we also have hundreds of packages, so here is one, five plus linear actuators. All right, we got more packages and we have more downstairs. We've got this one right here, and we have three more giant ones right out there. All right, we had like 12 major packages today and we're expecting more. Stock it up on parts. We got extremely lucky here because the one part we still were missing for the robot was the motors. These motors are 12 volt, 75 rotations per minute at 15 kilogram centimeters of torque. These are much stronger motors than before and will allow our robot to correctly go over rugs. The robot is nearly done now. Let's check it out. Speakers in front look great. You gotta love that. We got the new robot here, robot four, and we'll show the inside. Here's the inside of the robot. Oh yeah, that looks beautiful. Then we had another major problem that stopped us from finishing tonight. The hardware is all finished, but there are a couple tweaks we need to make to the software to finish the job. So we're on the third day in this day of life of a robotics company, and we have our working robot. So the robot's working. We still have a ton of work to make sure this can work with AI and a bunch of other stuff. But right now, the robot's looking crisp and we're ready to go for more. We're gonna try to run something. We're not 100% sure it's gonna work, but we're gonna improve it over time. So we're now teleoperating the robot. Very nice. <laughs> Let's see it. All right, can he fold the towel? Can we get Sourcey folding it with teleop? Nice. Good job, robot. Good job. Make sure to always pet your robot. This example is teleoperated, but we were able to actually get AI working with this robot, which we'll showcase in another video. I hope you guys enjoyed this three days in the life of building a robot company. I'll see you in the next one. Hey Chris, how's it going? It's like a pseudo-wudo. It's like, it's just in my way. And I just like, <laughs> can't like go around.